Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your own cream gels. Now there's a couple of things that make this type of formulation particularly simple. The first is the polymeric emulsifier that we use to put the emulsion together. And this means that it's also cold processable. That's the other great advantage about these types of products. Cream gels also have a superior light feeling on the skin. But I've already mentioned one of the key ingredients, those polymeric emulsifiers. So let me talk you through these materials and how to make appropriate selections. Now from your small suppliers, you may be a little limited in the types of polymeric emulsifiers you can obtain. The way to know if a material is a polymeric emulsifier is to look at the inky name. You'll see it's a combination of a polymer plus a lipid plus a surfactant material. Now when you get the three of these combined into the one material, you have a polymeric emulsifier. Just one example to get you started, this is Cepi Plus S from Cepic. And this is what the material looks like. So all of your polymeric emulsifiers look somewhat like this. It's, it's a liquid material. It means we can mix it with the oil phase readily and then combine it with the water phase. Absolutely no heat required. But remember, it's that special combination of polymer plus lipid plus surfactant that enables it to be this form as a raw material and enables it to stabilize your emulsions effectively. Now these fantastic materials, because they have that polymer and surfactant material present in there, it means you can really simplify your formula. For example, because the polymer is already present, I don't need another gum. And because the surfactant's present, I don't need another emulsifier. So this one simple material can make it really easy to put cream gels together. Let me show you how easy it is, and then I'll give you a couple of extra tips of what to check for when you're making your polymeric emulsifier selection. So this is all I'm needing here, and of course, that's the material there, which I've already measured out. So I've already pre-measured my ingredients. I have my water here. I have my oil phase. Now, you can use all sorts of liquid oils in place of this. And a lot of these polymeric emulsifiers can stabilize up to around 20% of oil, sometimes more without a problem. So again, you can check suppliers information to see the particular grade you're choosing, how much oil it can stabilize. Some of these can even stabilize sunscreen actives effectively and stabilize an oil phase right up to around 50%. Again, it depends on the grade. There are several grades of material available. So just check with your supplier. So now I simply mix my polymeric emulsifier and my oil phase together. And then I add that to the water phase. Now I'm just going to add my preservative and a little bit of fragrance. You could at this stage add other water soluble actives you could add essential oils in place of the fragrance. You could add antioxidant. There's just so much variety you can add into these formulas. Just check that your active is not an electrolyte, or if it is, pick a polymeric emulsifier that is electrolyte tolerant. And there I have my cream gel. And it's a beautiful cream gel moisturizer form. It really can't get any easier than that. Now there's a vast array of polymeric emulsifiers that you can obtain if you're able to go to some of the biggest suppliers. And some in particular uh, is the Pemulin or Novama range from Lubrizol. There is the Cepi Gel and Cepi Plus range from Cepic. And there is the Aculin range from Dow Chemicals. So you could contact some of those suppliers and get more information about the different polymeric emulsifiers they have. Now you might already be thinking, well, how come there's so much choice out there? Well, these particular materials may or may not be electrolyte tolerant and electrolyte resistant. Some of them are only stable over a very narrow pH range. Some are very stable over a broader pH range. 
They also differ in their ability to stabilize emulsions with cationic or anionic charge, so you'll need to check that out too. And they also differ dramatically in the way they feel in a finished product. Now the amount you use will also depend on the exact material you get from the supplier. So you need to check documentation carefully and look at those recommended input rates. Because with these materials, you don't generally need much. And in fact, usually less is better. So that's why you might want to make a cream gel. And of course they have that beautifully light sensory feel. Just don't overuse your polymeric emulsifier. Remember different grades require different inputs. So check with the supplier, even if you're purchasing from a small supplier, check with the supplier about the recommended input for the particular material you're using. Now I've mentioned electrolytes with these materials a couple of times. So again, if you are adding some electrolyte rich materials to your formula, please check with your supplier about the suitability of that material to tolerate electrolytes. A couple of other things to watch out for. Make sure you check the pH range of the polymeric emulsifier will suit the pH of your final formula. Make sure you use low shear only when mixing unless the supplier specifically states that your polymeric emulsifier can tolerate high shear. That's really really important because some of the polymers may be irreversibly cut by high shear. So always treat them with low shear unless the supplier's documentation tells you to process them otherwise. As you've seen, I haven't used another gum. I don't need to. There's plenty of polymer already in the polymeric emulsifier. And you could add around 2% of a non-ionic waxy emulsifier if you want to build extra creaminess to the formula. But it's not necessary for stability reasons it's purely optional if you wanted a bit more of a creamy texture to your cream gel moisturizer. You don't need an anionic emulsifier because you've got that surfactant in there stabilizing your emulsion. Now you may also be wondering, well Belinda, how does this compare to using a straight polymer like a carbomer or cross polymer material instead of these polymeric emulsifiers? Well, when you're using something like a carbomer or a cross polymer, a lot of them are ideal to create gels or to help with emulsion stability. Very few are able to stabilize and create your emulsion as the primary emulsifying material. Your polymeric emulsifiers by comparison have that polymer and surfactant present, so they are all that is necessary to stabilize your emulsion compared to a straight polymer, which is usually used as a secondary stabilizing agent and to help build a bit of that gel viscosity. So if you're looking to add 10% or more oil, you really need to check the material carefully and you are best to use a polymeric emulsifier to get the best possible long-term stability because they're very stable materials when you've selected them right and using the right input for the grade that you've selected. Remember, if you're looking to source from small suppliers, just check out that inky name. Look for a polymer plus lipid plus surfactant and you'll know you found a polymeric emulsifier. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you contact us for the free formula. It really is this quick and easy to create your emulsions and no need to wait till the next day because it's formed its emulsion on the spot on the day you make it. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.